where I talk about what I've been making each month and I've got quite a bit to share with you today and um, I haven't spoken to you since before Christmas so I've got I think I've got three finished objects and new sweater on the needles I've got you can see I've got my spinning wheel in the background I've been doing some spinning um, also got some other exciting sort of shop stuff to share. Don't know if you can see in the back there I've got one of my new calendars so I'll chat a little bit about that. Um, so yeah let's get on. I'll pop my cup of tea down. I think um, I'll start by sharing some of the more like Christmassy bits so we can get those out of the way because I'm sure um, yeah we're all well and truly out of the Christmas <laughs> Christmas spirit feeling but um, I've got these lovely socks I wanted to show you and these were actually my Christmas Eve cast on so I cast these on it's a West Yorkshire Spinners 4-ply I think it's called Signature 4-ply and this is the Hollyberry colourway and I've paired it with a really nice navy from Cascade Heritage from their solids range and yeah I think the navy sort of tones it down a little bit so they just look like a really lovely wintry sock but um, they do have a really nice Christmassy feel I definitely will enjoy wearing these a lot in December next year or well this year <laughs> but um, yeah I think I'll be wearing them all winter you can actually see they look a little bit fuzzy because I have worn them a little bit but I've tried to keep them as nice as possible because I knew I wanted to show them to you guys before I really properly started wearing them but yeah I just um, I've done a contrast heel I think for the heel I did the which heel did I do I think I did um, Fish Lips Kiss Heel for this. I'll have to check my notes. Um, I'll leave project notes for everything in the um, description box below this video. You'll find a link to the show notes. So it will take you over to my blog and I'll put links to all the yarns, fabrics, anything I chat about today will be in the um, show notes. And there's actually an email list. So if you enjoy these videos and you want to sign up to get a notification every time a video goes live and you get your show notes straight to your email, um, yeah, you can sign up for that as well. So I'll pop my socks aside. That was a lovely Christmassy project. I think I had those finished by New Year's Eve, so it was really nice. I cast them on Christmas Eve, and by New Year's Eve, I had a lovely new pair of socks to wear. So the other project that I wanted to talk to you about, um, which has a Christmassy feel, was my dad's scarf that I was knitting. So if you watched my last episode, you'll know um, it was in one of my joy sacks that I did this Christmas which I love these are such a good size for projects they're really nice handy project bag size so I have to do some more of those later this year but um yeah I was going to talk to you about my dad's scarf I haven't got the scarf with me because I've gifted it to him and if I'm clever I might be able to see if I can insert a photo because um I did snap a quick photo on Christmas day um as I'm sure this happens to so many knitters you're knitting down to the wire <laughs> and it was Christmas Eve I was watching Enola Homes, having some mulled wine and blocking my dad's scarf <laughs> so it was dry fortunately when I woke up on Christmas day and yeah I quickly wrapped it all beautifully and he loved it so that went really well um just so to remind you I used this I think it's called a cartridge belt rib stitch pattern and yeah it came out so nicely and I've actually um I wrote out all the pattern notes because I think I talked in the last video that um yeah I was having to rip back and sort of work out all the stitch count and everything for this yarn this was the fiber co cumbria fingering in the nutkin color nutkin colorway and it's a beautiful warm it's like a very warm fiery foxy red i would say it's a definitely yeah it's got a lovely warmness to it but it's also quite muted it's quite a muted red it's not an in your face red it leans more towards an orange but the amazing thing about this yarn and this scarf is that i think you can see just from my swatch this has just been stuffed in my bag and how beautiful does it look like I don't I, I don't know if you can tell on camera I'm sure it is coming across but the edges are so crisp the rib shows up super nicely and this is just why um, this was the perfect scarf pattern because I think even without blocking it looked great but as soon as it's blocked as well it just holds its shape so nicely I added a slip stitch um, to the edges so that gives it like a little bit more structure and it has a very neat sort of 
um, yeah, I think it had a very polished finish, so it looked very nice. And yeah, I think um, my dad was really pleased. And he actually said that when he went out the other day, some people were commenting, so it has been cold, and they were saying, oh, you're looking all bundled up. And he was very proud to say, oh, my daughter made me this. So <laughs> I think that was really nice as well. So he was feeling very spoiled to have a hand-knit scarf. So um, yeah, I actually wrote up all the stitch counts and the pattern, and rather than just leaving it in notes on my Ravelry page, I've actually made it look all beautiful and like a proper pattern and um, yeah I've cut out a PDF on my blog so if you're one of my subscribers you already got the free pattern I sent it to you um, after Christmas I think it was in my first email of the year I sent out that pattern to everyone su subscribed but I decided to put it on my blog as well so that when I was talking about today if you want to put this in your library for next year or birthdays or anything that's coming up you can just swap out the colours and I think it would suit literally anyone on your list <laughs> so it's um yeah really great pattern and as I say I think I just love that none of the edges are curling everything looks so perfect and yet yeah, came out exactly how I wanted it to so yeah that's the I've called that the joy scarf I actually even gave it a name because it was going in my bag I think it was one of those things it sort of escalated that I was talking to someone about um the notes because it was quite hard for me to work out I'm not a designer so going through all the trouble to actually work out how it worked perfectly with this yarn someone was like oh will you send me the pattern as well like you should write it up so it kind of escalated and then I had to give it a name because I needed to name the pdf so as I had it in my joy bag and it's a very joyful project in it I called it the joy scarf so go over and have a look at that if you're interested. So I think those are all the Christmassy bits out of the way. So let's chat about, um, what should we talk about? Finished object or project on the needles? Let's talk about finished object. So this is another lovely wintry project that I knit over Christmas and it's the Grow Hat by Fibre Tails and I knit this in the, the oh this is another Fibre Company yarn that I had in my stash, Fibre Company Law, I can't remember the colourway name, I'll put it in the show notes, I think this one might be, the yellow could be Happiness, I'm not sure, they all have really nice names like Happiness and Caring and <laughs> they have some nice names in that collection, but um, I think it works really nice with this because it has this sort of leaf motif and I think it really pops nicely. It shows in this really woolly yarn. And the brim's lovely. It has a twisted, no, not a twisted rib. Um, what do you call that? A, a tubular cast on, which I did do for this project. I don't always use the tubular cast on when it's called for, but I could tell that I thought it would give it a nice, neat finish for this rolled top. Should I pop it on? So you can get a proper look. What do you think? Does it look okay? I feel like it's quite a nice color with my dark hair. So yeah, I've been wearing this, it's been keeping me super, super cosy. And yeah, not much more to say about that. It's a lovely hat. I would happily knit this again, actually. I was thinking um, if I knit it again, I think I'd maybe use a lighter color like Lurka uses in the pattern. She uses like a very soft light, sort of warm gray, like a very neutral tone. And I might even make it like another, I probably do like that depth of the brim again, just to make it a tiny bit taller. I'm really petite, but I have a big head. <laughs> and I know this because um, oh, this is, I mean, this is going off a tangent, but um, years and years ago, I used to work as a makeup artist. And when I was training to do makeup, I trained to do um, like makeup for theatre and movies. So it wasn't like beauty makeup. It was all the scars and wounds and stuff. And on one of the days we all had to take it in turns to be the sort of demonstration and they were doing it so they made me look like I was bald and they use this thing called a bald cap and they do all the makeup so yeah it really looked like I had no hair so clever but um <laughs> while they were going through the bald caps they like went for the smallest one because I'm like the smallest woman in the class and then they're like oh no this isn't gonna fit and then it's like the next size oh no that's not gonna fit and I, went, I was like in one of the largest bald caps it's like a sort of swimming cap thing they put over your head and I mean I do have quite a bit of hair but I don't think <laughs> I don't think that was the only problem I think I do just have quite a large must kind of go further at the back so yeah, I don't think I look like I have a big head, but it is. So when I knit hats, often they're just a little bit more snug than they might be on everyone else. So I think I would maybe do another couple of inches, but it doesn't feel tight and it's just a different look to some of the other hats that I have as well. So very happy with how that knitted up. Great pattern. Did I say it was called the Grow Hat? Yeah, I think I did. So yeah, really nice other finished object. 
So next I'll talk about what I've got on my needles currently and it's in one of my gorgeous new bags. Really love how these turned out. This is called the Pressed Flower um, Collection and I think, I love it, it's really bold isn't it? I think they really stand out nicely, these sort of pressed flowers and leaves. So I hope you like that. These are going to be in the shop this weekend. I'm doing a massive bumper winter update. So I'm going to have um, these top handle totes. I've got little lavender sachets. I've got the, I'll quickly run through these as talking about this bag and then I'll get on with the knitting. I've got the tote bags. I've got drawstring bags. And I've also got the, if you like the kits that I did over Christmas, I did some, my winterberry kits came with these winterberry bags with the little gold berries. And I'm actually releasing these as individuals now. So you could only get these as part of the kits when they were out over Christmas, but I'm gonna have the top handle tote and the same as with the other ones actually. I've got the um, lovely tote bags it's actually quite interesting to see them maybe on video because in the pictures it's kind of hard to show when I when you see them next to each other they look almost like they're the same there's not much difference but I think you can see more clearly on the video this is definitely more of a tote bag and this is like a slightly smaller bag the tote fits a lot more so I've got tote bags and I've got drawstring bags drawstring bags are the classic ones everybody I feel like everybody who collects my bags has a few of these and yeah, the great size for all your accessories and socks and things. And the most exciting part of this collection, my new pressed flowers, is that I did a calendar for the first time. And let me quickly show you this. I was gonna show it at the end, but I'm on a roll now talking about this because I get excited when I'm talking about my designs. But um, I put together this gorgeous wall calendar and I love how it turned out. It turned out exactly like I wanted. And yeah, it's hung on an oak dowel. It's got some hemp twine and it has this lovely pressed flowers. Actually, the calendar came, idea came before the print for the bag. So yeah, you've got 12 months of the year and I've got my final batch of these. If you're on my mailing list, you will have seen these and I've talked about them on Instagram, but if this is the first time you're seeing them, pop over to the shop and snap one up because I won't be printing any more of these. We're already at the end of January, but I still think it's a great time to buy a calendar. You've got 11 more months to enjoy it. And I think it would look so lovely hanging in someone's craft room, or maybe you've got an office, even if you took it to work, I feel like it would just, yeah, it's a lovely sort of um, piece to have hanging in your craft room or your office or um, in your kitchen. I feel like so many places you could put it. It's very light. Um, it's cotton and you can see it's just got this, um, it just has a little channel that you slip this through. It's all beautifully sewn. All the edges are lovely and neat and on the back. So yeah, I hope you like those. I had a lot of fun putting those together. It's something a little bit different from me. So I hope you, hope you like it too. But I know most of you are here for the knitting. You don't want to see all of these project bags and stuff. So thank you for sticking with me for a minute. And now let's get back to what is in this beautiful bag. So this is a Christmas present cast on. I got the Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Sport. I've got a ball in here. It's the Bramble Heather colorway and it's Peruvian Highland Wool. And I've used this before to knit my Field Day Cardigan by Azetta. So I know that it's a really great yarn, I love this yarn. And I am knitting, let's get it, I'm on quite small needles for this size, so I don't want them falling off. <laughs> um, this is Andrea Maori's Weekender. So I'm knitting mine a little bit different, I'm trying to show you the front section. So if you're familiar with the pattern, Andrea has designed it to be worn with the reverse side out. So you have the pearl side, the reverse stockinette side facing out. But it's not really a look that I love. And it's so weird because every single photo of somebody wearing this sweater, I love it. But then when I see it in person, I just don't love that texture of the pearl side. So i am decided to knit mine and I'm going to keep the stockinette side out and I've just adapted, she has a slip stitch that runs all the way down the front and down the back and I've adapted it so I'm using a half brioche stitch which is the stitch that runs down the front of my Ursina sweater. 
mentoring loads of different projects today, aren't I? I'm going to put links so you can have a look at the Asina, can have a look at um, the what the original of this should look like. But it's got a split hem, so you can see that. I think I've got about five, maybe six inches on the needles. But it starts, it's got this split hem, it's knit bottom up, and then it's got this really lovely rib detail that goes down the um, part of the sleeve and across it's got a kind of boat neck. So um, all the detail really is at the top, but I think it really helps to have this nice sort of, it is a nice detail to have kept in the pattern. I could have just knit it completely stocking out, I think, and just had the detail on the shoulders, but I wanted to kind of keep as close to the original as I could. And I think this is a nice way of doing it. And it really does pop on my Asina. So I think that was a good choice to do the half brioche stitch. And it's really, really simple, but it's knitting up um, fairly quickly, but I must admit, I'm not loving this project. I've realized that I'm not a fan of bottom up. <laughs> I prefer to knit top down because I think, um, I think knowing that I can see how the sweater's gonna look, um, you know, once you've done the yoke or you've got all the shaping done and you can see that it's gonna be a sweater, there's something about that's really motivating to get through the rest of the stockinette so that you can wear it. Whereas this, it's just like a tube, there's not really much to see. I'm still kind of unsure how it's gonna look when I get to the top. So I feel like there's not really much motivating me for some reason. It's completely a mental thing because it's not that different to knitting top down but there's just I've realized since knitting bottom up that that's definitely something that I've found that I would prefer to be knitting all the stocking it after I've done all the exciting bit and I can see that it's looking like a sweater <laughs> so um yeah I don't think there's much more to say about that but I'll show you my progress next time I'll just keep working away and hopefully before I know it I'll be ready to separate for the sleeves actually it's quite a good follow-on because Andrea Mowry she um she also has a video on YouTube that she does every week where she answers people's questions I think it's called I'll knit if I want to and I'm always watching videos on YouTube where I'm knitting and I've really got into watching her every week and one of the things she shares quite a lot about is her spinning and it really got me inspired to dust off my wheels so this is my spinning wheel I'm not sure if you can see it super well in the background but it's a Woolmakers Bliss TT and I did buy it about five years ago and it's one of those things that I dabbled a little bit when I got it and I never really I don't know I never really took to it I don't know if it was busy at the time for whatever reason um it sort of got put to one side and when I moved it stayed at my parents house had it kind of packed away and yeah it's been there ever since so over Christmas I got the bug kept seeing Andrea Mowry and yeah there's a lovely woman that I follow on Instagram I think her name's um I should have googled the pronunciation before that's a tip for anyone else who does videos whenever there's a word that I'm not sure how to pronounce I always do the google and you can hear how someone says it so for instance like liner magazine you maybe wouldn't have known that's how you pronounce it but if you do the google translate you can find it but anyway I think her name's Hikari and she has a beautiful feed I'm going to put a link to her Instagram feed and she actually sells fiber and she spins fiber and yeah over the last few months she just posts beautiful photos and it's like art popping up in my Instagram feed so I was very much influenced by her and kept seeing all these beautiful things um, I thought I can't buy any of her fiber until I'm spinning again so got my wheel out and I've been storing all my fiber in one of my sweater sacks and I just keep them in paper bags or I've got a couple of new things recently. Um, so yeah, this is, actually let me show you, where's my, oh, it's in my basket. So I popped it, I showed this the other day on my Instagram actually. This is the first skein that has come off of my wheel. And that's not to say that's the <laughs> this is the first yarn that's come off my wheel because I've pulled off a lot of stuff that looked like spaghetti. Very, very, um, yeah, just not the kind of yarn that was gonna go into a skein. I really have been practicing, building up my skills. I've been taking a course called Foundations is Spinning with Amy King on Craftsy. And yeah, it's really good for kind of going through all the basics. And she has you go through these wheel games where you're trying different ratios and 
all sorts of things that you can tweak on your wheel and basically I was going through that just playing lots so there was loads of stuff that came off that just looked like spaghetti basically but this is the first time that I was spinning and I got to the point where I thought I'm ready to ply and yeah that's what I did so <laughs> I've put it into a little skein I'm not intending to make anything with this but I am thinking that I will keep it and sort of it's a really good thing to look back once I'm hopefully improving and I'll be able to see how far I've come because this is the first kind of thing that came off. It feels really lovely actually. It's John Arburn um, Falkland Merino. It's an organic merino and I chain plied it and this is 42 grams. I've put a little tag on and I've put the date and it's my first hand spun. So I'm really, really proud of that. And I've been keeping little records of my spinning. So this is my singles, this was my plied yarn. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to be really good at the record keeping side of things. And in this bag, I've got some more John Arbon fiber. And this is, this is why I like keeping it in paper bags because you can write on them. So this is Harvest Hughes Top 65% Organic Merino and 35, hmm, how do you say this? didn't prep today, that was bad wasn't it, <laughs> uh, do you say Zwarbles, not sure, Z-W-A-R-T-B-L-E-S, so this is, oh doesn't that look great, it's coming up really nice on the camera, you can see it's really shining, but this is a beautiful um, fibre thing, I'm not sure what you call it when it's, it comes like that, <laughs> don't know all the terminology yet, but this is a little sample that I test, spun. I think this is probably just a little, I don't know if this is like five or 10 grams, but um, let me see if I can unwind it. This is spinning up a lot finer than the white yarn that I was using. And I really like how this is turning out. I think this looks more like a sort of fingering or a sport weight. Let me see, can you see that? I think, yeah, I'm sure you can probably see that, but it's come out a, a lovely blend of sort of greens and blues. I'm so new to spinning, I have no expectation for what something's gonna look like when I'm spinning it up. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really pleased with how this is coming. It definitely feels like it's spinning a lot finer and I'm gonna kind of go with that. That's what I've been, how I've sort of been approaching my spinning is that I'm not trying to control the yarn. I'm not got a idea of thinking, right, this is what I'm trying to create. I'm just working through the stuff that I have and accepting that it might not be something that I'm gonna maybe want to um, knit with at the end of it. I mean, if it will, if it is something I'll knit with, that would be great, but if it's not, that's totally fine. It's, I've got to get to the point where I'm practicing and that's the only way I'll get to doing really good yarn and beautiful yarn is by using up the fibre that I've got. I think it's very hard as a knitter, it's quite um, easy to, you can always unravel, frog and get back to where you were. <laughs> so, and you get, have a ball at the end. Whereas with fibre, once it's gone, it's gone. So there's something that makes you want to be a bit more precious about it. And I've tried to totally let that go out the window, not be precious with it, have fun and yeah, use colors that maybe I wouldn't necessarily usually choose to knit with. So that it's fun on the wheel. I've got, um, I'm not sure if I can, let's see if I can unravel these. I got these for my birthday. Oh yeah, did you see all my birthday cards in the background? It was my birthday on the 15th of Jan. <laughs> so this is a Viola top in the cinnamon colourway. And these were from my sister. So I did give some clues of what I would like. <laughs> so there's the cinnamon colourway, which I think is going to be lovely to spin up. And this one, if I remember rightly, it's more blues like the one that I'm spinning. Oh yeah, this is beautiful, look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? What's that? Soul Dreams, that's a Yarnadelic. That's gorgeous, isn't it? So yeah, really excited to get to spinning those. And yeah, as I say, I'm not putting any expectations for it to be a particular project when I've finished. I'm just trying to allow the fibre to show me what it wants to be so that it's a pleasant experience when I'm spinning it and yeah I'm not worried too much about controlling it at this point. Sorry about the tweaking. 
so yeah these are great these sweater sacks for keeping all my bits and bobs in so i think that oh i haven't talked about what i'm wearing and this is actually would be great for someone who's spinning so this is the sophie scarf by petite knits and it would be a really good project for spinning because you basically work till so you could weigh your yarn or weigh your fiber and use exactly half of your ball to get to the middle point so you you start in let's take it off so you can see you start in one end you knit to the middle and then you start decreasing so similar to the winterberry shawl that i was talking about last week that i did with claire for my kits um it's a side to side shawl so you start from the point and you work your way to the middle and then you decrease down to the other point so it's a brilliant stash busting project because you can yeah you can pretty much use any yarn this is a fingering weight i think the pattern's written for a fingering weight i hope i've said the right one because there's two there's the sophie shawl and the sophie scarf and i believe they're the same pattern i think they're probably just written for different gauges and different amounts of yarn but the principle is the same that you increase to this middle point and then decrease so i was using the uh, what is it called? Aramore Light. This is Fibre Coat Aramore Light. Another yarn that I had in my stash. And I thought this had been discontinued, but it was actually the heavier version. So you can still get this yarn. It's the St. Clair's Colourway. And this is a great yarn. It's got a very crisp feel. It's like quite a... I don't know how to describe it. To me, it feels like quite a dry yarn, which probably sounds weird because all yarn is dry. But I don't know, there's something about it that it almost has like a slight quality that maybe like a linen has. I think maybe that's my best way of describing it. It's like the woolly equivalent of linen. And I don't believe it has got any linen in it. I'm not sure what the blend is, but it's um, it didn't have a tag on it. It was just a random ball that had been balled up long, long, long ago. Probably when I was working with Fibre Company few years ago so I didn't have the ball band but I knew that's what it was it was in a bag with a load of fiber company stuff that I'd been working with and I thought this would be a great project for it and I'm so pleased that I did knit it because I kind of everyone was knitting it <laughs> when something's really popular I don't know why but sometimes I like resist jumping on the bandwagon because I don't want to just do what everyone else is doing but I did I jumped on the bandwagon I'm glad that I did because I don't think this will be the last it's almost like as soon as I cast it off I missed it and I wanted another one it's such a meditative knit it's very rhythmic I think there's like about an eight row repeat so very very simple and because it's quite a shallow um scarf i think it works really well hers in the pattern's tiny if you've seen it but i love it for this kind of thing so i'm wearing this is the pheasant pullover by amy christophers and it's knit using the fiber um not the fiber company uh jameson and smith two ply jumper weight and you can see it's got quite a wide neck that is sort of lower at the back and i think these are just perfect for that because i can just you can see it just like covers up the back of your neck if you need to and I quite often wear smaller shawls like this when I'm working um, because they stay out the way and I can kind of have something like that and just have something kind of keeping me warm around my neck so it actually is the kind of shawl that I like to wear a lot my larger shawls I tend to wear them more as like a scarf out of the house but this is really good if you have a lot of these kind of sweaters where they have a wider neck and you get that kind of chilly bit i think that's perfect so yeah if you haven't tried the safety scarf jump on the bandwagon <laughs> don't wait any longer i know a few of you wear knitting because i said last time um when i showed this i said let me know in the comments if you're Sophie scarf <laughs> knitting and quite a few of you wear so thanks for letting me know let me know today what are you working on now or you're watching now all of your gift knitting's out the way january's the time when us knitters can really knit whatever we like and i feel like 
the woolly weather season is well underway. We're all wanting to wear our hand knits, wanting to knit our hand knits. I feel like January is, yeah, it's a lovely time to be a knitter because I think most people have that kind of January blues, don't they, where it's very cold and dark and wintry and yeah, I think that brings people down. But when you're a knitter, that's actually like the perfect knitting weather is when it's too cold and too dark to go outside. You just want to curl up with your knitting and you can have that lovely cozy feeling that we all have when we're knitting so yeah let me know where you are in the world if you're cozy and if you're knitting <laughs> thank you for joining me today I think that's everything that I had to talk about I showed you all my bags come and have a look at the shop come and get your bags and I've got my lovely ones with the gold if you want a winterberry bag don't forget the winterberry bags are coming back I'd love it if you treat yourself to a calendar so I still have a few of these in the shop so yeah come and have a look at the shop Get your show notes down below if you want to knit any of the projects I've talked about today. Find out what the yarn is, all that good stuff. And yeah, give the video a like and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. It will let YouTube know when you give it a like that this is the kind of video you want to see and they'll show you lots more of the lovely nitty YouTubers as well. <laughs> so yeah, that's all from me. Have a lovely, um, I think this will be going up on a Sunday. So I hope you've had a lovely weekend and have a great week ahead. Take care. Bye.